Welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the fourth video in IB Biology Topic 6, Human Physiology, where we will be looking at the lungs, ventilation and gas exchange, and lung disease. As introduced in our IB Biology Topic 1 video series, all organisms respire, a process that requires oxygen and produces carbon dioxide as a waste product. But how are these essential gases obtained and removed respectively? Well, we have lungs. The lungs are large, air-filled organs in our thoracic cavity. They sit on top of a curved muscle known as the diaphragm, with the heart nestled between the two lungs. They are contained by the ribs, which form a cage to protect the lungs from trauma. Between the ribs, there are muscles, known as the intercostal muscles, separated into two layers, the outer, external, and inner, internal, intercostal muscles. The lungs are connected to the outside atmosphere through our mouth by a tube, known as the trachea. Following from the mouth, the trachea divides into two main branches, known as the primary bronchi. These then enter their respective lung, where they branch again to form many bronchioles. Each bronchiole then divides itself to form many sac-like structures known as alveoli. It is worth noting that the trachea and bronchi are surrounded by collagen rings to keep them open, and given the branch structure are referred to as the bronchial tree. Alveoli are then surrounded by many capillaries to enable the exchange of gases in and out. But how are these gases provided? Well, this occurs through two key processes, ventilation and gas exchange. Ventilation is the process by which fresh air containing oxygen enters the lungs and stale air containing carbon dioxide exits the lungs. It occurs thanks to the action of inhalation, breathing in, and exhalation, breathing out. These are two highly organized actions involving the contraction and relaxation of several antagonistic muscles, i.e. muscles that work in pairs to perform opposing movements. During inhalation, the diaphragm contracts and flattens, moving downwards. The abdominal wall muscles relax, allowing expansion. The external intercostal muscles contract, pulling the ribcage up and out. The internal intercostal muscles relax, increasing the volume of the lungs. These all lower pressure, below atmospheric pressure, and so an air is drawn into the lungs. During exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes and curves, moving upwards. The abdominal wall muscles contract, pushing organs inwards. The internal intercostal muscles contract, pulling the ribcage inwards and down. And the external intercostal muscles relax, decreasing the volume of the lungs. This raises pressure above atmospheric pressure, and so air is forced out of the lungs. A particular experiment investigating ventilation that the IB expects you to be comfortable with is the effect of exercise on ventilation rate. This will be explored in greater depth in our exam practical video series, but as a brief overview, two identical groups are given two activities, sitting and running and their ventilation rates are measured before and after. One would expect a higher ventilation rate in the running group. Ensure you take time to memorise the descriptions of inhalation and exhalation, as well as familiarise yourself with this practical. They are common exam questions. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.